J-Boy on the beat. J-Boy on the beat. Miami. It's all summertime. It's summer, From the upcomers to Hollywood. Summer Gonzalez, they know her pretty good. Yes, sir. she got the best show and the best time from 8 p.m. night time. If you miss her show, it's okay, cause she comes on each and every Thursday. Poet. Yes. Extraordinaire. Awesome. I recorded the whole first poem you, that you did. Amazing. Tell us all about you. Tell us all about me. Well, a little bit about me. Um, I'm just a spoken word artist from Miami. Pretty much, I just travel and compete, and I use my words to impact, inspire, motivate, and just remind people that they are not alone in their struggles. I'm just a firm believer that every single time you get on stage, you should use your platform to shed light on topics that are otherwise seen as taboo and speak on things that the media refuses to address. So that's pretty much what I'm all about. I'm all about impacting lives, changing lives, motivating people, and making people feel like the best versions of themselves. And that's just all I'm about. You ain't even rhyming, and it's like, it's like, it's like poems. <laughs> it's second nature at this yeah, point, man. Yeah. Yes. No, you are very, very good. I was filming you, like I said, and the women were going crazy in the audience. I mean, they was like, ooh, ah, ooh. You know, and I, I caught some of it, you know, their reactions. How does that make you feel to know that your words are doing that to people? Um, I don't know. It's so crazy because when I set out doing poetry, I never imagined being at this point, you know what I'm saying? I just keep on getting bigger and bigger and I, I just give the glory to God, really. I never really like, you know, I take praise and criticism the same with a grain of salt. Right. You know, that's just how I've always been taught. So it's like when I hear the screams or whatever, of course it fuels me, but it, it's not like a, it doesn't like boost my ego or anything like that. It's more so like, I know that this is, it's, it's further confirmation that this is what I should be doing. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yes, that's it. Um, how long have you been doing poetry or writing? I've been writing since the seventh grade. Wow. You know, I've been writing since the seventh grade, but taking poetry seriously, mm -hmm. I, I started in 2017. My New Year's resolution actually was to, um, yeah, my New Year's resolution in 2017 was to take poetry seriously. So. so. And how often do you write? Because I'm interested. I, I write myself, not like you though, but I write. Mm -hmm. And I get lazy, you know, and I get in, you know, slumps sometimes, and I don't write. Do you write every day or? I mean, everybody goes through writer's block. That's just something that, you know, everybody faces, unfortunately. You know, I wish I could just write 24-7, but, you know, that's not the case. So what I do is, if I get to a point where I have, like, writer's block, I switch to a different sound. So, like, I like to songwrite. You know what I'm saying? I like to make music as well. I like to rap. I love music. So it's like, if I get, like, writer's block in terms of poetry, sometimes I switch to rap, and I just, like, be writing rap sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Nothing, like, major. But it's like, it keeps the, the juices flowing, the creative juices, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you switch to songwriting, you're still thinking, you're still, you know, you know, piecing together new ideas, new concepts, new themes. So I could think of something in rap and just be like, oh, let me just translate that poetry. You know what I'm saying? So whenever I have writer's blog, I just switch to something different. But um, as far as how often do I write, I try to write at least like a paragraph a day. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That way I have like a certain set of consistency. You know what I'm saying? I hold myself accountable. Because you know accountability is everything. So um, yeah, pretty much every day I set aside like 30 minutes whether I'm tired, whatever. I need 30 minutes. You could think of one paragraph. That's literally all you gotta do. Or I'm like, think of a new concept. Something that hasn't been done before. Put that on paper, you go to sleep. Yo, you are a very disciplined young man, very talented. I wish you nothing but the best. I know it's going to happen for you. You're going somewhere, you you know. Um, tell everybody where they can find you on social media. Okay, well, um, my name is Rugeri Dangerville. So on Instagram, it's actually my name, uh, Rugeri Dangerville. That's R-O-O-J-E-R-R-Y. D A N G E R V I L, Ruth Jerry Dangerville. I also have a website, it's RuthJerryDangerville.com. My Twitter and my Snapchat, they're Dangerous Ru. So it's D A N G E R O U S, oh, Dangerous Ru. And that's pretty much it. I love it. I love it, man. Congratulations on your performance today, and I'm going to follow you this minute. Thank you. I appreciate you. Follow me back, Rob. I'm gonna add you to the list of things I'll allow to ruin my life. See, my doctor told me that I should probably stay away from snacks, but your lips 
are the candy coated treat that my mother warned me to take in moderation. But my father told me that in this lifetime, you gotta find something you're willing to die for. So to be honest, I'm ready to slit my throat and rip my heart off of my sleeve just so I can auction it off to the Grim Reaper in hopes that the value would be enough to cover our wedding cost, baby girl. I'm willing to die for you. I love you in a language that I don't quite understand. So when I tell you that you make me speechless, it just means that I'm still searching for a way to translate how I feel into what I want to say. See, loving me, loving me is a meal that even I don't have the ingredients to. But I heard you were a chef. The way you make me smile is a secret recipe that I'm not quite too sure how you got your hands on. They say the quickest way to make a man fall for you is to feed him. So I know for you that definitely won't be hard. I turn my face into your throne and we will definitely never starve. I want to be good to you. I want to treat you better than the norm. I want to be the catalyst for the raindrops in between your thighs and you know your boy will always weather the storm. I want to be good to you. But something tells me Cupid only shoots his arrows at me when there's only a couple minutes left before his shift is over. It seems like any time I've ever been struck by love, it's always been with someone I least expect. I'm kind of hard to love. I'm a museum of shattered pieces put on display with fragile don't touch signs that my ex is completely disregarded. My heart is a bounce house that has been routinely stomped out. It's something that my former lovers have thoroughly enjoyed playing in. I used to think God and Cupid partnered to perform the greatest practical joke of all time on my love life. I swear, I can't wait to meet you to my future wife. You're probably out there struggling with a deadbeat dude. You probably consider retiring early from this game called love, but I promise you, it'll all be worth it someday. I write a song so beautiful about our love and serenade you with it every single night until you fall asleep in my arms. I see you every single time I see the back of my eyelids. I just don't know what you look like yet. But I pray that when I finally see you, I know exactly who I'm looking at to my future wife.